Let your mercy be on us, O God, as we place our trust in you. Let your mercy be on us, O God, as we place our trust in you. Good morning and welcome to St. Mary on this Thursday in the 27th week of Ordinary Time. And we are called to reflect where we are called to grow, to not get caught up sometimes in all the little minutia of, of life, of all the rules and regulations, but make sure we understand the bigger picture that is about being a people of love, being a people of mercy, a people of forgiveness. And then sometimes all those other small details will fall into place once we've got it in a pretty good in right order by following God, by following the ways, the commandments, but in a way that goes beyond the letter of law to the spirit. We are called to see each other as brothers and sisters walking this journey together as we head back to our Heavenly Father. And so we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to par pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. O stupid Galatians, who has bewitched you, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified? I want to learn only this from you. Did you receive the Spirit from works of the law, or from faith in what you heard? Are you so stupid, after beginning with the Spirit, are you now ending with the flesh? Did you experience so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Does then the one who supplies the Spirit to you and works mighty deeds among you do so from the works of the law or from faith in what you heard? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm will be, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born in the house of his servant David. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. Through his holy prophets he promised of old, that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Ale 
Jesus said to his disciples, Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked. My children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give him the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand the son a snake when he asked for a fish? Or hand him a scorpion when he asked for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please join me in the intentions for this Mass for, the, for our deceased, Mary Stair. May we remember her family in our prayers. And so in the readings today, we hear about gifts. We hear about gifts that we don't even know how to ask for. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be open. And that sounds very easy, very simplistic. But we know that's not how it works. We know how we often will knock on that door. We will plead with God for this or that. We will seek a certain way of living. A life that we seem to define that will make us most happy. Most fulfilled. But we know we don't often get those things. Because the underlying aspect is God will only give us what is good for us. It's just like those people who are sinners. They will not give their children a scorpion when they ask for a fish. They will not give them something that's going to harm them or hurt them. But sometimes the things that we ask for, which on the surface might seem good, might be in reality not good for us. Or not as good as God wants to give us. And so we can often get discouraged. We can often hear people saying, well, I asked for this, I prayed for that, I didn't get that. My mother died, my child had cancer, my husband divorced me, my wife cheated on me, even though I thought I was being that good person, I being that good husband, being that good provider. And even in our parish life at St. Mary, we can often say we don't get what we want. We are not getting what we feel we need out of services, but yet we are called to continue to pray, can continue to ask God in our own ways, even asking your will be done, even over these specific petitions, these specific requests. Even in this time of pandemic, times when we're kept away in some ways from our church, where we can't go into it in the same way, we're still called to, to seek, to ask, to knock, and then we have to be patient with what God is going to provide for us. Because I know looking back in my own life, and I'm sure you can look back in your own, and you can say, thank God I did not get what I asked for. Thank God I did not get what I sought. Thank God 
The back door that I asked to be opened was not opened because it was another door that needed to be opened, that I had to be more patient, where I grew in a new way, where I grew in how to be compassionate to others, where I saw after the fact with 2020 vision how if I'd gotten something, it would have been a disaster. It would have took me on a path that would not have been good. And so we were called to ask, to seek, to find, to knock, but always then be open to where God truly wants to lead us. So as we grow in the way of understanding what is good for us, because it's coming from God. And when it's coming from God, it's always good. So let us be joyful in what we receive. Let us continue to ask until we then become a little bit more recognized in what God really wants us, that this thing that I'm asking for is obviously not the best for us. God has something else. God has another plan, and we have to be patient. So let us be patient. Let us be joyful. Let us recognize the gifts that we have received, and let us continue to ask him to give us what will truly make us happy, what will truly make us whole, what will truly help lead us to our eternal life in heaven. Let us stand for our petitions. We pray for all those things, all the desires of our heart that truly come from God. We pray that they can be come to completion. We pray to the Lord. We pray that we may be humble of spirit and mind as we look out and pray for others, and that we can be used as the answer to other people's prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick that they may be given comfort and healing. And we especially pray for all those names and intentions that have been placed in the book of the sick. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died, especially my Aunt Mary Stair, that she may enter the door that has been opened for her to eternal life. We pray to the Lord. We pray those prayers in the quiet of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, you give us all good things. Let us be open to growing and recognizing the things that you provide are better than anything we could hope to ask for. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and the work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, a peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Just to give you a little update on our parking lot, last week they started excavating, so if you've been driving around anywhere in the area, you probably saw some very large equipment. They've dug down two feet, 
Normally they would only do go six inches, but because of our, our realities of, of our parking lot being built on the foundations of the old school torn down uh, in 1960, where they just threw everything in the basement and then covered over. Making sure we have a good foundation, they had to go down a lot deeper. So now they've dug out a lot, they've brought some uh, stone for laying, and they're also working on the new drainage and piping system. So just to give you that uh, update. So we are looking at a three to four week process. So we're looking towards the end of October, early November for completion. And we are looking to do a, a dedication, a rededication of and blessing of our parking lot on Thanksgiving uh, day as part of our, our mass. So please keep the workers in your prayers for safety and that we will go through this together and that it will help, help us keep us safe and also give us glory and praise that we can give to God for all the blessings that he has given us that we can provide to make sure that our campus is safe for everyone who drives on the parking lot or walks across the parking lot. Let your mercy be on us, O oh God, as we place our trust in 